So we were thinking, how can we show this chain, the design, make and enjoy, in a very, very short amount of time, in just a few minutes? And then we said, well, you know, why don't you do it in the time of making a drink? And so the idea is that you can actually design your drink on your phone, you can mix the ingredients, combine things in the most crazy way as you wish, and then robots and machines will actually produce it as an experiment in social creation and consumption. Actually, that's why our lab is called Sensible City, and we think the Sensible reveals a much more human city. Smart city is more like a city, like a computer in open air, but actually Sensible is a city that responds to citizens. And we think that that's the most important things in the places we live. If you are able to do something in order to make our cities more efficient, then that can be a very big deal. What is happening with transportation today is actually very interesting. There's incredible changes happening at the city level. We know everything about the city, but we also have a lot of information from inside the car. And that's actually the road frustration index you refer to uh, is, uh, is doing this, is actually collecting a lot of information about the driver inside the car. Now, the interesting thing is that when you have a system where you know a lot about the city and the car knows a lot about what happens inside and outside. You know, when you think about self-driving cars, everything changes. Because, you know, you go to the city where, for instance, uh, you don't need traffic lights anymore. Where just, you know, cars will magically cross without bumping into each other. It's almost like a digital version of, uh, of Naples. And, uh, and then you also, you know, you can get mobility on demand in a way that public transportation and private transportation become also, almost, you know, the same thing. Uh, you know, you just uh, can get a car to move from A to B and you can share it also with your family, with other people or with everybody else. So uh, that is going to be one of the biggest changes, I believe, in mobility over the next few decades. Well, I'm not particularly excited about technology. I think all of this is not about technology, all of this is about people. It's about actually how technology can help us do the things we want to do. And you know, the most exciting projects usually are the ones where technology completely disappears and actually allows us to do new things without seeing it. So Carlo, assume you have all this street furniture, all these benches and all these bus stops and everything has a wireless uh, connectivity to it. How does the street furniture look different? Is it covered with JC Deco advertising? Or is there some other business model that will change and, and change our, the design of the city? It's about connecting people to people, object to objects, people to objects, and so on. In other terms, as a recent exhibition at MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York put it, it's like you know, we are creating a world that talks to us. The question we need to ask is, why do we want all of this to talk to us? Why do we want to talk to our washing machine? And I think that's only relevant if that helps us to talk better to each other.